The O'Reilly Factor is on tonight. He proposed a budget that was so ludicrous that not even the Democrats in the Senate would vote for it. A budget that increased the debt, not solved it. Republican Senator Marco Rubio takes on President Obama and outwits Bob Schieffer. Will he be the GOP's VP nominee? Bernie Goldberg, Britt Hume, and I will analyze. Future of the country hangs on the debt debate. That is the subject of this evening's Talking Points memo. On paper, the debt thing is boring, and many Americans aren't paying attention. But the controversy will define the future of the USA. On one side, President Obama and the Democratic Party want America to become an entitlement state that compels social justice, financially supporting Americans who can or won't support themselves. On the other side, Republicans want a lean, mean economic machine. The GOP doesn't much care about providing money to those who have not. The party wants to drastically cut government spending and promote private business to bolster the economy. A new CBS poll says that Democrats are winning the PR war. When asked how the debt negotiations are being handled, 43% approve of the way President Obama is going about it. 31% say the Democrats in Congress are doing okay, but just 21% believe the Republicans have the correct position. Now, that either means the GOP is not getting its message out, or the vast majority of Americans want a Western European style entitlement state. Talking Points does not believe that most Americans want that, so the message seems to be the problem. Enter Florida Republican Senator Marco Rubio, who absolutely destroyed CBS newsman Bob Schieffer yesterday. Rubio began by hammering Mr. Obama. Every president has to be judged by the times in which he lives. This president's now been in charge for two and a half years. Okay, he has, uh, he has increased federal spending by 28%. Washington went along with his prescription for joblessness, which was the stimulus package. And unemployment is higher than it was when he took over, significantly higher. In fact, we have not had unemployment this high for this long since the Great Depression, with no signs of it getting better. And that's true. The president is having a very hard time moving the economy forward. But why? Senator Rubio thinks he knows. He proposed a budget that was so ludicrous that not even the Democrats in the Senate would vote for it. A, a budget that increased the debt, not solved it. There was a strategy to leave this to the last possible moment so that there would be a take it or leave it scenario like what some are painting right now. With economic chaos facing the country, you have to do more than just criticize. You have to put forth a plan. So Mr. Rubio did. I think a credible solution to our debt problem has to have two components. It has to have budgetary reforms, in essence, a de decrease in spending of at least $4 trillion or more, and it has to come with some sort of growth enhancers, something that helps grow our economy. And by the way, I don't trust Washington because they have shown time and again that any time they get their hands on more money, they don't use it to pay or avoid debt. They use it to grow the government. Senator Rubio believes that if unemployment drops dramatically, government revenues will rise because more people will be paying taxes. He went on to say that he does believe in closing some tax loopholes that corporations and wealthy people use. Now, this isn't a partisan analysis here. This is the truth. Senator Rubio put forth his party's position clearly and efficiently. If the Republicans want to win the vital debate, they need to follow Rubio's lead. And that's a memo. Bernie Goldberg will have more on this coming up, including Bob Schieffer's question about blaming the Bush administration for the current bad economy. Thanks, Jay Wiz. I'm Bill O'Reilly in a weekdays with Bernie segment tonight, as we told you in the Talking Points memo. Florida Senator Marco Rubio did very well yesterday on the CBS program Face the Nation. Aren't you going to have to concede, though, Senator, that maybe the previous administration might have had a little something to do sure, uh, with a bad economy that the president uh, inherited when he came into office? All right, so where's the president's plan? I've never seen a piece of paper with a president's name on it that's his plan to solve this problem. I've seen press conferences. I've seen lectures that he's given to the Congress. I've seen these press avails where the camera comes in and takes a bunch of pictures. I haven't seen a plan. Where is the president's plan? Joining us now from North Carolina, the purveyor, BernardGoldberg.com, Mr. Goldberg. Now, I think Bob Schieffer had to ask that question, but because, you know, he's kind of a Texas liberal guy in the vein of Dan Rather, you know, when, when people hear it, they kind of flinch. Um, what was your impression? No, just on the question, it was an absolutely legitimate question. President Bush, he wasn't the president of Sweden, you know, he was the president of the United States. Fair question, great answer by Marco Rubio. Let me make two points, one of them political, and I'll do that briefly in the other media. 
If the Republicans don't put Marco Rubio on the ticket, they need to get their heads examined. Here's a guy who presents the Republican position better and is, is more capable of swaying public opinion, I think, than anybody in the Republican leadership. So that's, that's my political statement. The media statement is this. A narrative, a storyline has developed, and it goes way, way beyond uh, our friend Bob Schieffer. And the storyline is simply this. Uh, Barack Obama is the reasonable one. He is the one who is responsible, fiscally responsible. The Republicans, on the other hand, are not responsible, and the only two words they know are no taxes. Okay? This, this narrative, this storyline, wasn't created by the media. Barack Obama painted that picture of himself, and his pals in the media predictably picked it up and just ran with it. Never mind that in the past two years, Barack Obama has spent money like Imelda Marcos in a shoe store. The narrative today, especially for the least sophisticated voters, is that Barack Obama is the responsible one. And that's why, Bill, that's why Bob Schieffer could ask Marco Rubio this, and I took down the exact question. The president has made concessions, and this is what Schieffer said, but I don't hear any concessions from people on the other side. They just say no taxes, and that's near their negotiating position. Bill, that is word for word Barack Obama's position. Okay. But, word for but word. But Rubio is able to, and I think he's the only Republican that I've seen lately. He was able to take the leading questions that the media is formulating and, and the perception right. they're trying to, and destroy it by saying, all right, even if you're narrative Bob Schieffer is true even if right, Bush exactly. did it and and the Republicans don't give in on taxes even if that's true what's he doing he's had it, the, right. Bill you're absolute you're 30 months thousand it, percent right what's he doing okay right and that's why I think uh, and I think Britt Brit Hume was absolutely correct and I'm glad you mentioned that poll in the uh, in the talking points that's why I think that when this story plays out the Republicans may very well lose uh, the public relations war uh, they are coming across as intransigent and Barack Obama this is I mean it's a great irony Barack Obama who has been spending us into the poorhouse is coming across as the one who is fiscally responsible only Let if me you're not paying say, attention though only if you yes you're, exactly said this, exactly right. The, exactly, the voters and the viewers people, who are paying attention, like the viewers that are watching us now, absolutely know that Marco Rubio is right on. He's, and I'm not saying this from a partisan point of view at all. Right, I that, agree. That you, you, I, like I the agree. president waited until the last moment to get this debt thing going, and now we're facing Armageddon. That his right, budget Bill, proposal was voted down by the Democrats. It was so wild. And Rubio right. just pounded it home and pounded it home and pounded right. it home. But, but Bill, Bill, even unsophisticated voters, even people who don't, they don't know what a debt ceiling is. I mean, even people who aren't following this, they're allowed to vote in this country. Not allowed to vote. And when those, and when, when those people hear it, I think it could hurt the Republicans. Now, I think the Republicans, I want to be fair about this, I think they've hurt themselves in this. Barack Obama comes out with this really class warfare cheap argument about well the republicans are letting the uh the the corporate jet owners get off with these tax loopholes why don't the republicans at that point say you know what let's eliminate that uh, fine eliminate that loophole they don't do that and they do come off as intransigent you see that's the problem no i and, understand that's why first, that's why i picked rubio today i put him up as the example of this is the argument this is it. And, and very few Republicans have been able to articulate it the way Correct. the Senate has. And the other reason that he will, I think, unless he turns it down, be the VP nominee is because he's from Florida. And the Republicans have to take that state if they want to defeat the president. And because I, he's Hispanic. I would, he's Cuban. I would, put him, I would put him on the ticket if he was from Guam. He is the future. Uh, he, he is he yes, beyond absolutely. articulate. He is very smart. And as I say... He could convey the message to those unsophisticated voters in a way that they would understand it and sway their public opinion, and he which also, I think is going to be very important. He also said that he would close some of those loopholes that Bernie just mentioned. Yeah, right, right. exactly, exactly. All right, Bernie, thanks very much as always.